What's that? I said, looking forward to the season. For sure. And uh, the tournament coming up for your squad here, and we'll get into that, who you got on deck here as the uh, regionals are getting ready to start across the state. But let's dig into your background a little bit. For folks that don't know, you've had quite a bit of success there at Pocosin, a team that's made championship runs before. Uh, fill the audience in on how you got involved with field hockey, what year this is for you at Pocosin, and uh, how much you enjoy it. Well, I started playing field hockey back when I was in elementary school. Um, I had two older sisters and they were getting involved in field hockey and going to camps and clinics. And at the time I, I was too young to stay at home by myself, but I was old enough to go and attend the clinics. So my mom and dad were like, well, if your sisters are going, you're going. And so I started, you know, playing field hockey back in late elementary school and then through middle school and then. Um, I went to Minstrel High School and um, they didn't have middle school sports then. So eighth graders could play JV. So I played um, JV field hockey for Minstrel as an eighth grader. And then in ninth through 12th grade, I played on the varsity team. Um, after that, I went to Christopher Newport University and um, they did not have a collegiate field hockey program then. Uh, so my first year out of high school, I gave gave it a shot at refereeing, and I quickly learned that refereeing was not for me. Um, so my next year, my second year out of high school, there was a coaching position that opened up at Minchville High School. So I was the JV coach at Minchville High School for nine years under Coach Melanie Haas, who was my high school um, high school coach. My senior year in college, um, a friend of mine, Tara Worley, and I started a club team at Christopher Newport. And then the next year is when they um, went and had a collegiate team. Um, so I've been coaching ever since. This is my 27th year of coaching field hockey. Um, I coached JV at Minchville High School. I coached two years at Denby High School as their varsity head coach. And I was one year as the assistant coach at Christopher Newport under Sue Mancha, who was from Salisbury, Maryland. And um, then I found out I was expecting my third child. So I decided to take some time off from coaching field hockey. I took four years off from coaching. And then I started back coaching in Bacosin um, as the JV coach in Bacosin from 2007 to 2011. And then I took over as the head coach. And this is my 12th season as the head coach of Bacosin Islanders. That's awesome. And just a couple of years ago, correct me if I'm wrong, won the state championship. Was it overtime in 2020 against Tab, the uh, Bay Rivers rival? So you got a great rivalry over there. And I think that's what, that was your state championship, correct? Yes, sir. That was that. It was the first and only state champion so far in the history of the Coast and Field Hockey. And uh, a name you brought up there, I have to uh, reference uh, Tara Worley. She's re regarded as one of the best uh, to do it as far as the sport goes over at Lakeland when she was coaching. And uh, I know you mentioned a great yeah. friend of yours. How much of an influence has she had on in uh, what you all do as far as field hockey goes? And I imagine she's a good sounding board for you. Yes, she is. Um, her they they moved over from the Suffolk area to Pocosin, um, when her daughter Reagan Worley was um, going into the ninth grade. So she um, was a Reagan was a great addition to our program. Um, very knowledgeable of the sport, um, just like her mother, um, and and definitely brought a little um, competitive edge to our program. That's awesome. Well, uh, we look at. Uh... This current team for you now, I know a name that I keep seeing come across the reports as far as getting goals and making things happen for you is Elizabeth Trant. Tell me about her a little bit and some others that have been key contributors to your team's uh, success thus far. And I know she's going to be a good one up for probably uh, all region and all state accolades potentially. Yes, absolutely. Elizabeth Trant is just delightful. Um, nicest, sweetest little girl that you could ever meet. Um I think we lost Coach uh, Chapese here for a second. We'll see if we can reconnect with her as she was talking about just the delightful, uh, wonderful uh, young lady that Elizabeth Tran is for her over at Pocos. And it is field hockey with Hatfield. So we'll, we'll, we'll try to uh, 
recalibrate and uh, get this restarted here with Coach Chapezi in just a moment here on uh, Field Hockey with Hatfield. So hang tight here just a second. All right, we have uh, Coach Chapezi back with us. Sorry about that. You were talking about just the delightful young lady that Elizabeth Tran is for you. Continue if you can. Yes, she is just as sweet as she can be on and off the field. Um, however, in a competition, she um, she definitely is um, a ball of energy on the field, almost like a little a little spitfire out there. She um, she can get herself into some tough situations, um, difficult situations, but maneuvers her way out. Um, she is a great distributor of the ball. She's a great carrier of the ball. She um, is um, an amazing voice on the field um, to my to my teammates or her teammates, I should say, leading them in the direction of where she wants them to go, um, getting them in position for her to send the ball to them. Um, she is a great competitor. She's very knowledgeable and super, super easy to coach. That's terrific. Um, and yeah, then, go ahead about some other what, players besides Elizabeth, if you can, Coach. Well, I was going to say one of the nice things about Elizabeth is she's just in 10th grade. So I get to have her for a couple more years. Um, behind her, I have Grace Oates. Um, Grace Oates is a junior and um, she is another um, delightful young lady, very easy to coach, um, an easy teammate to have. Um, Grace is a very good voice on our field. She directs our midfield. Um, she's directing, um, you know, the, the offense on where to go um, and reminding them, you know, make sure you're open in the circle. We got to have movement in the circle on self-start. She's telling them to, you know, to get open. Um, and then Grace also does the same thing back on defense. She's she's leading her defense on where they need to be and who they need to mark and making sure that they're aware if there's any players that are open. Um, behind Grace, I have my goalie, Jordan Ivey. She is a senior and she plans to continue her academic career and field hockey career at um, Shenandoah University next fall. Um, she, um, she, again, a very easy coachable kid, um, takes it all in. She is another good voice in the back of the field. Um, she also does a nice job of directing her defensive players on, on where they need to be. Th those three are my key leaders. Outstanding. And you mentioned one, getting a chance to play at Shenandoah and you got Trent for a couple more years, which will be exciting for your team here as they continue to grow. And it is a young team coach. You're having a lot of success with a lot of youngsters. Uh, I know sophomores, juniors, that's not all senior laden, if you will. Speak yes. on that, just their development. And then you play a very challenging schedule. You don't back down from some of the, the bigger schools in the area. It just took on Grassfield to conclude the regular season. What's that do in terms of the preparation for this playoff run that you hope to have? Oh, I believe that you you get better by playing better teams. Um, I, um, I always look for a challenging schedule and try to make a challenging schedule because I feel that, that my players rise to the occasion and we're only going to get better and learn to be better by playing better, better teams. Um, along with that, with my, my, my team that I have this year, I have two seniors, I have three juniors and seven sophomores. So we are a super small team this year. Um, that's only 12 players. And then um, we only have one sub. And so when we're small in numbers, and then you're also young in, in youth and skills, skill ability, we make sure every practice is productive. Um, the girls work hard from the minute they walk out on the field for practice to the minute they leave. Um, we we run practices sometimes where we're working in multiple different areas of the field doing stations. Um, and we go from one skill component to another. And then we bring it all back together and put it as a whole group activity. Um, so all the skills that we work on in one day, we can implement at the end in a whole group activity. Um, I would say that I am pleasantly surprised and pleasantly pleased with how our team has done this year. Um, when we started on August the 1st, 
Um, I would say I had a little reservation based on our youth. Um, my my seven 10th graders, um, I would say three, four of them, four of them only have one year experience from JV last year. So you're, you're talking about a girl that has one year playing experience on JV is now on varsity playing with some seniors that have already four years experience on JV. And um, I think that makes, that makes a big difference. Um, but I, I also think that um, with the competitive schedule that we play, it has definitely um, helped my program and helped my girls grow and develop to, to, to step it up. Absolutely. In our last couple minutes here with Darcy Chapese, the head coach of the Pocotes and Islanders. She's got a coach of the year in her background, also a state championship here. Our guest on field hockey with Hatfield will have our top 10 coming up, probably our last one before the playoffs get started here, coach. And you've got to start the regionals. Correct me if I'm wrong. I'm, I'm looking at the schedule. It looks like New Kent coming up for your first matchup on Thursday. Is that right? Yes, sir. We host at Pocosin. Yes, sir. Okay, so you get a chance to host, and you could run into very potentially the rival in Tab in the postseason. One of your only three losses this year, so you could see them in a rematch. You've got Nance over and First Colonial, who are two very good teams that have been in our top ten all year long. Your team also in the top ten along with Tab there. Uh, as you look at what's going to be the key here to this tournament coming up, what do you tell this group of, of seven sophomores and, and youngsters that have sort of grown up here as this year's gone along, and, and you feel like uh, you're, you're maybe playing your best at the right time of year, and you took two losses back to back, but you got that big win over Grassfield to maybe springboard you here in the postseason. Um, I think my team has matured nicely um, over this season with their with their skills and their development in field hockey. Um, like I told them yesterday in practice, we're going to take this one day at a time. We're going to take it one game at a time, and we're just going to go from there. Well, it should be a lot of fun before we get you out of here. Uh, you mentioned being the mom. I, I, I looked in the background. I think you got a chance to coach was it your daughters and also your son went on to wrestle in college. Give us a little bit of the background of there of, of the, the youngsters and also any players that maybe you haven't touched on yet that have come through your program that are playing at the collegiate level and those that you'd like to shout out if you could. Yes. Uh, yes. I have two daughters that um, both played for me. Um, I coached them in their club and then, well, I coached them at youth when they started playing um Newport News Parks and Rec Summer League, um, and then coach them um, in club field hockey and then for Pocosin High School field hockey. Um, they both went on to play at the collegiate level. Uh, my oldest daughter did uh, four years at um, Lynchburg University, and then my, my middle daughter, she did one semester or played one year at Shenandoah, and then she transferred to uh, Lynchburg University for her last three years. Uh, my son is currently a sophomore at West Virginia University, and he was a wrestler in Bacosan, and he has continued his academics at West Virginia University along with his athletics um, on the wrestling team. Um, as far as some of my other players that um, have played uh, collegiate field hockey. Um, I don't have any of this written down, so I'm just shooting from from the top. I've had Leslie Spate and Emily Duell play at Iowa University. I've had Karen Jasinski play at, um, it was Lynchburg College then. Um, Evan Bunting and Jordan Stolmacher have played at Virginia Wesleyan. Um, Emma Barefoot and Emily Swartzball are at Shenandoah University. Her twin sister, Haley Swartzball, is at uh, Randolph-Macon. Uh, Galen Goodman played at uh, Bridgewater. Uh, Kelly Jasinski and um, Emily Deeds played at Roanoke College. Haley, um, Haley Inkster played up in uh, Maine. Um, I can't remember the name of the school that she went to. She went to, for marine biology up in Maine. Maddie Baker played at Shenandoah University. So I've had a good a good amount of players that have gone on to play at the collegiate level. I've had some that have just played um, club field hockey. Caitlin Kaysen played club field hockey at Virginia Tech. Mackenzie Miller played club field hockey at UVA. And um, 
Libby Harper, who was one of our standout players from last year. She is playing club field hockey at James Madison this year. Awesome. Well, hey, thank you so much for the time today. We wish you and your program all the best in the postseason coming yes, up. Yes, thank you so much. My, say hello to my good buddy, Mike Whittington over there, the new athletic director. He's a oh, good I friend, sure and will. I know he's very proud of what you and the ladies are doing over there at Pocosin. And uh, we'll talk again soon, and we'll keep our fingers crossed for the Islanders to make a state playoff run. Perfect. Thank you so much. Have a good day. You got it. That's Coach Darcy Trapezi, our guest here with Field Hockey with Hatfield. We'll take a timeout, come back with our Il Giardino Chicken Parm Player of the Week, the top 10, and put the finishing touches on this edition as the playoffs are upon us here. Now we'll hear from some of our sponsors at the Plex.